It's the most happy time of the year, but it's also the most wasteful time of the year. In fact, if you haven't heard the very popular statistic, our waste does increase about 25% between Thanksgiving and New Year's every single year, but it doesn't have to be that way. I'm here with you today to talk about some eco-friendly Christmas tips for having an eco-friendly holiday season. Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all sorts of things zero waste, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste. And of course we have to talk about zero waste holidays when they come up. First category we're gonna jump into today is gifts. Now this might be an unpopular opinion, a hot take if you will, but I think you should tell people what you want for Christmas or your birthday or whatever occasion is happening, as well as you should ask them what they want. Now you don't have to just give them one thing. You don't have to say like, I want a camera you can say, I want a camera, I want a new blender, I want to take a pottery class, I would like a coloring book, like <laughs> whatever it may be. Give them a list of 10 to 20 things. So that way they can pick one or two things off of your list and it's still a surprise for you. They still feel like they're surprising you. It can still be a lot of fun in this way, but so much less wasteful. Because if they're just guessing what you want, it might be something that you actually don't want. It might not be your style. It might not fit you. So many different things could go wrong if they're just surprising you, especially if they don't know you like terribly well. And this just leads to unwanted gifts. Now, the next tip, if you do get unwanted gifts this holiday season, don't throw them away. If you are giving someone something, you could also print the receipt so that they could return it as well and then get store credit and then buy the version that they want, the version that fits them, whatever it may be. But also, if you get something unwanted, you can re-gift it, you could sell it, you could donate it. Sending stuff to the landfill is already tragedy enough, but particularly sending brand new stuff that could be used and wanted and loved by someone else to the landfill makes me really, really upset. If you wanna learn more about why particularly we should not be throwing stuff in the landfill, Fill if we can help it. We'll learn more in this video, but in short, our landfills are filling up. Maybe this is another eco hot take, but you don't necessarily have to get someone something eco friendly. You don't have to get them something that will help them reduce their waste, like a reusable water bottle. You don't have to get them something that's made out of a sustainable material. Now, if you can find exactly what they're looking for, but a more eco version, that's great. But at the end of the day, if you get someone a reusable water bottle and they're not interested in living zero waste at all, that's going to go unused and unwanted. But instead, if you get them something that might seem wasteful, like the latest gadget, the latest game, the latest book, whatever it may be, if it feels wasteful to you, but that person's gonna use it and love it and cherish it for a long, long time, that's so much more eco-friendly than getting them an eco-swap that they never use. So again, know your audience. If you know someone in your life wants to live more eco-friendly and you can help them by getting them some zero waste swaps, that's great. But if you know the person just has zero interest in living zero waste, don't bother because it will go to waste, potentially end up in the landfill since they are probably not eco enough to like donate or resell or re-gift something. Okay, so now that you have the person list of their 10 to 20 things that they want for the holiday season, check secondhand first. This might be taboo. I still think there's just such a misconception around secondhand items that they are dirty, they're broken, they don't work, etc., etc. But when in reality, you can find some secondhand stuff like new or even brand new. A couple examples. This one might not be a very good gift, but I got some secondhand silicone like cupcake liners recently. They were brand new in package, but I got them for half the price and I didn't have to buy something brand new and create new resources. And then also like literally just yesterday as I'm filming this, Dan got a secondhand an iPad that someone had bought brand new, used only a couple times, and then they didn't want it anymore. So like there are so many good secondhand options out there that will reduce waste by not having to create new products as well as save you so much money. And if you wanna learn more about why shopping secondhand is so important for the planet, you can watch this video next. But let's say you wanna avoid gifting things this holiday season. Gifting experiences is a really, really great gift you can give that builds memories and creates literally no waste, usually. Especially if you don't know what to get someone physically, but you know like, hey, they really like pottery. They really like arts and crafts. They really like music. They really like events. You could get them an experience instead. Or also some people just don't want stuff for the holiday season. But here are just a few examples of some experience gifts that you can give. If you want more, you can check out my full holiday gift guide right here. You can give them the gift of an extreme sport like skydiving, skiing, snowboarding, rock climbing. You could give them the gift of lessons like piano lessons, other music lessons, sports lessons, pottery lessons, or other sort of classes like a sewing class, a silversmithing class, Japanese classes, a language class. I want Japanese classes. You could take them to a museum or just give them like a gift card to their favorite museum, an art museum, a science museum, a children's museum. Not only like paying for their sports lesson, but you could also just pay to go to a sporting event, a basketball game, a hockey game. But again, I have a lot more where that came from in my gift guide. It's also pretty difficult to go wrong with edible gifts. So if you want to bake someone something, if you want to cook someone something or like kind of edible adjacent is like making them a cookbook. One of my favorite gifts I've ever received is a handmade family cookbook or stuff that they can also bake themselves. Like you could
can pre-make those like cookie dough in a jar and then all they have to do is add like milk and eggs. That stuff is really great as well. And then when it comes to stockings, don't fill stockings with junk. Don't feel obligated to make your stocking overflow with stuff and be filled to the brim because then that can also lead to just literally filling it with junk and unwanted items. Fill it with stuff that's going to get used. Food, again, food is great stuff. School supplies, office supplies, um, stuff that they actually need like socks. I know socks isn't like a great gift to receive for Christmas, but guess what? Everyone wears socks. Everyone needs socks. And think about what they actually want. Like if you have someone who really likes art, maybe you can fill it with crayons and colored pencils. If you like someone who's really into sports, you could get them gift cards. Gift cards are great stocking stuffers or new baseballs if they if they need some new baseballs or new golf balls. But if you're looking for more eco-friendly stocking stuffer ideas, you can check out this video, my gift guide from 2020, I think. You could also make gifts this year. I love doing DIY gifts. In fact, I'm doing almost entirely DIY gifts this year. I don't think anybody's watching it <laughs> but I'm making handmade hats and mittens for my nieces and nephews. I'm making some handmade ornaments for people. I'm making some handmade candles for people. And then in the past, I've also made crochet bags. I've made crochet baby blankets. I made my mom pot holders last year. But this also counts as like baked goods, cookies, breads, paintings, drawings. You could sew someone something. Whatever your skill is, you can use that to make a gift this year. But also you can take their list that they gave you, the, their list of, you know, 10 to 20 things that they want and try to find a more eco alternative for it. So say for example, someone wants, where is it? A phone case. You can instead head to Pila and try to find a phone case that they would like, but it's eco-friendly instead. That's just one example. Candles as well. Candles are traditionally very not eco. So instead you could find a candle that's made with soy wax and in a jar that can be reused or recycled. You're, if you don't want a DIY gift, if you don't want an experience gift, you want a physical gift to give them, you can check out my gift guide. Maybe you can find something in there that they would be interested in. Those will all be linked down below. And then also when it comes to gift giving, make sure that you're wrapping your gifts in a mindful way as well and avoiding plastic based wrapping paper or plastic paper combo wrapping paper because neither of those can be recycled typically avoid things like glitter, bows, and ribbons. You could simply just omit wrapping paper or you can opt for stuff that's made from 100% paper that can be recycled. You could use reusable wrapping paper. You can just reuse traditionally wasteful wrapping paper. I have a full zero waste gift wrapping guide that just came out the other day. You can check that out up here. Let's move on to throwing a holiday party. First up, we'll talk about food. Make sure that you prepare food accordingly so that you don't make too much. Not everybody likes leftovers. So if you're not a leftover person, make sure that you don't make leftovers so that they don't go to waste. As well as even if you are a leftover person, there is such a thing as too much. Plus you're going to be putting in way more labor than necessary if it's just going to go to waste. So don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. Don't waste resources and hurt the planet. Plan accordingly and make food for the actual amount of people that, you're com that are coming. Now, if you do have leftovers, have a plan for them. If you like leftovers, great. Make sure that you actually eat them. Keep them in a spot in your fridge that you'll remember to eat them. Don't shove them all the way to the back so that they're forgotten about. Slash, give them away to people. Especially if you don't like leftovers, you can give them to your guests to take home. And bonus, have a plan to do this in a more sustainable way. Don't send them home in disposables. Instead, send them home in containers that can be reused. I actually did a video recently in collaboration with my friend Kelly from Made to Sustain where we talked about how to reuse Thanksgiving leftovers. And thankfully for a lot of us, our Thanksgiving food and our Christmas food is quite similar. So if you want some creative ways to reuse your holiday foods, you can check out this video. If you can, make as much from scratch as possible just to reduce the amount of packaging. For example, I like to make rolls for the holiday season because they're tasty, but also because they reduce packaging. Instead of going and buying a pack of King's Hawaiian, that's fewer amount than I make handmade as well as they come in really hard to recycle or impossible to recycle packaging. That's just one example. Now, of course, that is a lot of work if you're doing the entire meal prep yourself. So what you can do instead is a potluck. You can ask each guest to bring one thing or two things. So that way it's reducing the workload for everybody involved. It's easier to make stuff handmade, which can reduce a lot of waste. And then of course you can make it exactly how you want the correct flavor. You can make it according to your dietary restrictions and so forth. When it comes to serving, use reusable cutlery and dishes if possible. My mom has a ton. So we use reusables here for her Thanksgiving. And when we hosted, when we lived in Okinawa, we were the only only married couple in our friend group. Everyone else was in the dorms, so we were always the ones that hosted. And instead of buying, you know, pack after pack of disposable cups and plates, I just went to the thrift store, found a bunch for like a quarter or 50 cents a piece, and then I kept them for several years and just used them every single time we had a party, as well as like forks and knives and spoons. Like we had so much, which was great because it saves money over the long run. And of course, it saves so much waste if you have the ability to, you know, do all those dishes and stuff. So that's a great way to reduce waste. But if you're having a party that you're like, this is going to be way too big for reusables, or you don't have a dishwasher, you don't have the ability to wash all this stuff by hand. What you can do instead is opt for paper plates and bowls and stuff or bioplastics instead of regular petroleum based plastic. Even if you don't have compost, bioplastics are still a little bit better than petroleum based plastics. And you can learn more about that in this video, but like extra bonus, if you have curbside composting, you have commercial composting. This is a really great option for you because then this stuff will not go to the landfill and it instead will be turned back into soil. 
hopefully. My favorite brand is Repurpose if you're looking for some bioplastic and paper-based disposable cutlery for your holiday party. A fun idea that requires less work from everybody, it can be quite eco-friendly, and also just a lot of fun is having a cookie swap. You can get together with friends, you each make your favorite cookie, you swap cookies, and you also swap recipes. I did this a couple years ago with strangers when I lived in Okinawa. It was particularly with the Okinawa vegans, so like I got several different vegan cookies to taste and also the recipes to try out. So much fun, it's a great way to make friends or just hang out with your friends that you already have. Moving on to decor. First is to use what you already have. Okay, let's take a look at my mom's Christmas stuff back here. You already had this. <laughs> That's it. A lot of this stuff is new because I haven't been home for Christmas in seven years or so. I'll go find some of her other stuff in the other room that she has had probably since before I was born. So obviously she's added new stuff here and there, but she's still kept the old stuff and just added to it instead of like throwing all of this away at the end of this year and then buying all new stuff next year. People do that. Now it's not very common, but people do that, um, which is so wasteful money wise, resource wise, and just totally unnecessary. Like I love the cozy homey vibe and it's so fun to come home for Christmas every year and be like, wow, I remember Remember that decoration when I was five years old or whatever. So much nostalgia. So use what you already have. Now, if it's broken or just really out of your personal style, you're out of your aesthetic, whatever, then look into getting rid of it, but please don't throw it away. If you have the need, you feel the desire even to just get rid of your old decor for whatever reason. Maybe my mom wants to switch away from gold and red and green and she wants to do blue and silver, for example. Instead of throwing all this away, she can take it to a local thrift store. She could give it away for free or even sell it on Facebook Marketplace or offer up, make a little bit of money, keep all this stuff out of the landfill. If you feel the Need to change your style as well as if you want to change your style try thrifting decor as well you can head to a local thrift store like in person or again get on facebook marketplace get on offer up search for exactly what you want like blue and silver ornament six foot christmas tree pre-lit christmas tree like if you're looking for something specific it's really easy to do that online find your stuff secondhand it can still be really high quality still really nice you're saving resources if you're not going to do it for the planet do it for yourself because it will save you so much money shopping secondhand instead when it comes to trees learn which one is right for you and i have a full video on real trees versus fake trees again you can check it out up here if I don't have cards. If there's no more cards, it will be down below. In short, chopping down Christmas trees to use real ones is actually not as bad as we think because it's natural. It will turn back into the earth when we're done with it. It sequesters carbon while it's growing and most tree farms will actually plant three trees or so for every tree that they cut down. Meaning every tree that they cut down, there's gonna be more planted and more carbon sequestered, more green spaces. So it's really not that bad to be cutting down trees. Now, cutting down trees is not for everybody. Some people are allergic to pine. Some people have cats. Some people have children. There are plenty of reasons to not have a real tree. If you want a fake tree what i encourage you do is buy one second hand would be great but if you buy one brand new use it for a long time i believe it takes about 10 years for a plastic synthetic fake tree equal the cost of using natural trees just because it does take a lot of resources a lot of metal tech plastic to create a fake tree. So if you use a fake one, use it for a long period of time and it'll pay itself off. But if you do use a real tree, please don't send it to the landfill. Again, our landfills are running out of space. And if we send literal trees to the landfill, yeah, not good. So what you can do, if you live in a wooded area, just chuck it out into the woods. If you, if it's on your property, do not go dump trees illegally. We had to deal with this a lot when I worked at the park this summer was people dumping stuff illegally. Even if it's natural materials, you legally cannot dump that on public land. So state parks, national parks, Bureau of Land Management, Forest Service, etc. don't do it. If you have a friend that lives in a wooded area, you can try asking to dump it on their property. Don't dump it illegally. But what you can do sustainably and ethically is just search for a tree mulching service near you. For example, I would search Dayton, Ohio tree mulching and I could probably find one. Search like tree recycling, Christmas tree recycling, whatever it may be, some of those keywords to find one near you. It's turned back into mulch or compost and then it can be sold back to people as a natural mulch, which is great. Speaking of recycling, learn where you can recycle broken lights instead of throwing them away. Throwing away tech is one of the worst things that we can do for the planet um, and you can learn more about tech recycling down below. It is extremely toxic, extremely pollutive and harmful to send tech to the landfill. Tech is so valuable. It makes no sense to throw it into the landfill when we could be recycling it. So again, I would search something like Dayton, Ohio, Christmas light recycling. And I actually even found one while I was writing this script for this video. One you can find, I believe it's nationwide. It's called Christmas light source. I will leave that link down below as well. If you have any fragile decor, any of this, yeah, I think this is glass. So like a glass ornament like this. Now I'm not just going to stick this in a box and call it a day. I'm probably going to wrap it in paper, maybe even some reused bubble wrap and then put it in a box and then maybe surround the other box with other soft stuff and then be mindful of not to put heavy stuff on top of this as well. Also like keep it out of reach of children and pets to keep it from breaking as well. You could also make some decor yourself. I I love making decor. I have a really old video. I'll leave a link down below for you. Uh, a little walk down memory lane. I think I did that in like 2019. It is old. I found some old cutting boards in the trash. I painted those into Christmas signs. I made stars with forged twigs and twine. I painted pine cones that I foraged. So you can make some really fun decor for free, low cost.
lost if you find stuff in the trash or forage like I do. This year we have some, we used a lot of trees at work. So I had Dan cut them really, really thin before we left the park. And I have circles from an old tree that I'm going to paint into ornaments this year. There are tons of DIY decor ideas. You can just head to Pinterest, Google, YouTube, not my YouTube. <laughs> um, maybe I'll do one eventually when I have a house. But yeah, this is also a really fun idea that you can do like over Christmas break with kids. Moving on to clothing. This is kind of a weird Christmas topic, I suppose, but particularly when it comes ugly sweaters and Christmas sweaters in general. I hate the idea that there are ugly sweaters being manufactured to look ugly when in reality, the, the origins of ugly sweaters were just like vintage sweaters that were like, I can't believe someone made that in the 70s. That is just hideous now that it's 2012 or whatever. Um, but now it's like companies are specifically designing fast fashion sweaters be ugly. When in reality, ugly sweaters to me are like, they have some charm, they have some character. They might not be like up to today's fashion standards. They're not like hideous. Go thrift one. First off, you can go find a truly ugly vintage sweater secondhand and also just wear one you already have. You don't need a new ugly sweater every single year. Use the same one over and over again. I have one Christmas sweater. I wear it every single year in my gift guide. It's just my gift guide sweater. It's not ugly. I love it. And in this one, I just thrifted. I'm like, this is so Christmassy. I need that. I want another Christmas sweater. So I thrifted this. Um, again, not ugly, I don't think. <laughs> but yeah, use what you already have. And if you feel like you need a new one, check a second hand first. When it comes to Christmas cards, I'm gonna give you a few options for you if you like Christmas cards. First is do an e-card. You can do this for free, which will save you so much money. Doing a physical card requires you to pay a lot of money to print the cards, to send them out, etc. So you can do this for free. My favorite is Canva. There are so many different graphics and templates you can use. I like to do this every year, just like a little cute Christmas card of us, me and Dan, a couple pictures of us and then I'll type up a little synopsis of like what we did this year and then I'll post it on Facebook and then everybody can see it. I'll text it to people who aren't on Facebook so that way they can get a little recap of our year. That's my personal favorite, particularly because I'm a procrastinator. I'm like, oh, it's Christmas Eve. I guess I need to make a Christmas Christmas card and I can do it in 10 minutes. And then I don't have to worry about shipping and everything. Now, if you do want a physical card, ask people if they actually want one. Now, most people will probably just say yes because they feel obligated to, but some people will be like, listen, I'm not someone who likes to hang stuff up in my fridge. I'm not someone who likes to keep cards. It just creates clutter for me. I'm good. And then this can save you money and waste as well. Another tip for if you still want to do physical cards is to opt for fully paper cards instead of cards that contain stuff like plastic, glitter, etc. And bonus points if you want to opt for one that's like made from recycled paper or printed on soy based inks. And if you know someone in your life doesn't have recycling, you can offer to recycle the card for them if they don't want to keep it to hopefully reduce a little bit of impact there as well. If you have people like in your surrounding area that you want to deliver cards to, go hand deliver them. That's so much nicer to get like a friendly face at the door instead of, you know, sending a card to the next town or just a couple streets over. You could take them to your friends at work, your friends at school. You could take them to the family gatherings and just pass them out to people there instead of mailing them to them. This can save you money on postage as well as emissions with all of the shipping. If you receive Christmas cards and you don't wanna throw them away and you don't want them to just sit in a box either, find a creative way to reuse them. Put them like this glass ornament. You could cut out the pictures and put them in a glass ornament and then you have an ornament with everybody's faces in them. You could create a shadow box of sorts. There are other ways that you can repurpose them and hold onto them in a more meaningful way than just sticking them in a box. Or if you're not someone who likes to keep cards and you receive a card that you don't necessarily want to keep, recycle it instead of throwing it away. Um, something fun I've seen too, like if you just receive a generic Christmas card that someone bought at like Target, the dollar store or wherever you buy cards these days, what you can do is like cut out pieces of the card, like cut out a cute Christmas tree, cut out a cute snowman or reindeer, whatever it may be. And then you can repurpose those as gift tags instead of throwing the entire card away. Let's quickly talk about some other Christmas traditions that are generally wasteful, but they don't have. First is gingerbread houses. I hate those gingerbread kit. They are full of plastic, full of non-recyclable stuff, and none of the stuff in there is generally tasty. So instead, I encourage you to make a gingerbread house yourself at home. It can be quite easy. You can make it tasty. You can make it much more fun and customizable. It's not that difficult, especially if this is a tradition of yours. It can save you a lot of waste and honestly, probably a bit cheaper. There's not a lot of ingredients in gingerbread that are like expensive. And going along with that is to actually eat your gingerbread. Don't let it go to waste, particularly don't let it go to the landfill. If you have compost, cool, compost it because it can go bad pretty quick just sitting out on the counter. But this is also just a perk to making it yourself at home. You can make it tasty and then encourage yourself to actually eat it instead of just throwing away your hard earned labor and food. Alternatively, if you want to make one at home but you don't like gingerbread for whatever reason, you can make it consumable for wildlife. You could make it out of things like oats, seeds, nuts, nut butter, and then you can still have the, all the fun building it and then set it out on your back porch in your backyard and let the wildlife come and consume it. Now, of course, don't put anything on there that's going to make them sick. I'm still not a big fan of wildlife, feeding wildlife because it can make them reliant on humans. So 
if you do elf on the shelf please don't make it wasteful i have seen some really really wasteful elf elves on the shelves on the internet like wasting toilet paper wasting food wasting decorations and so forth and it makes me so upset all this fun for a little elf becomes so much waste of course you can still have fun with your elf it's a fun tradition but do it in a less wasteful way Just i also encourage you to avoid wasteful games in general some really common games that i see during the holidays is this one game you take a bunch of dollar store junk like literal junk because nobody wants to spend money on this you wrap it all in saran wrap you put oven mitts on i've played it once and i hated every moment of it and then you try to unwrap the ball and then all the prizes that come out you get to keep but again it was dollar store junk it was like chapsticks little tissues, low rubber bands. I can't really think of any other wasteful games. Now, and I'm not trying to like knock down anybody's Christmas traditions. If see these are part of your traditions, I encourage you to look at them and see if you can make them less wasteful. Like even the saran wrap game. I hate it in the fact that all that saran wrap is being wasted. But if you fill it with things like gift cards, stuff that people will actually use, that's so much better than dollar store junk. So like there are ways to make it less wasteful, maybe not perfect, but look at your family's traditions and see if you can make them less wasteful. I got a couple more traditions. The next one is white elephant. I know a lot of people do this extremely wastefully by going out and buying brand new items as a gag gift. One year, someone bought a bedpan. No one's gonna use that. It's gonna go straight to the landfill. You wasted your money, you wasted resources, and so forth. But I did White Elephant, was it last year, with people from my work, and we made it a lot of fun by being no buying new. Everyone just is gonna find something in their home that they wanna get rid of. The funnier, the better. And that was a great way to do White Elephant in a more eco way. Similar to that is Secret Santa. Secret Santa can be really, really wasteful, especially if you do it at work with people that you don't really know very well. This can be wasteful by, again, not knowing somebody and then getting them something that they're not gonna use and want. What we did at work as well, was we made a spreadsheet and we would put our interests. So I would I put like crochet, foraging, cooking, baking, crystals. I don't know what I put on there. So that way, whoever picked me for Secret Santa could be like, oh, perfect. I can go get Emma some yarn. I could get her a book about foraging. I got a book about foraging. And then the person that I picked was like, I really like making mixed drinks. So I bought them like a really nice mixed drink set. So this is a great way to do Secret Santa in a way that the gifts won't go to waste. At the end of the day, don't sweat a little bit of waste. This is a time of joy and hanging out with family, fun and food. And if there's a little bit of waste created, don't sweat it. If you have to buy, you know, your bread rolls and packaging versus making them yourself because they take four hours to make, understandable. But if you can avoid waste when it comes to wrapping gifts, giving unwanted gifts, secret Santa, whatever it may be, do as much as you can. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, climate change is not your fault. Climate change is not my fault, but we should be doing what we can when possible. Nobody is perfect. Don't give yourself anxiety over just a little bit of plastic during the holiday season. Remember to enjoy this time with your friends and family. If I missed any ways that you have an eco-friendly Christmas or just generic holiday season, let us know down below and perhaps I can make a part two for next year. I hope you guys are having a happy and healthy holiday season. I will leave the rest of my eco-friendly holiday content down below. Everything from gift guides, gift wrapping, wasteful things to avoid during the holiday season, how to throw an eco-friendly party, and so much more. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, remember that your small actions make a big difference in the long run. Bye, guys. Make sure that you prepare food according to the steps for the... Oh, I just had an idea. Mr. Krabs, I have an idea.